Okay, what's going on, Internet? What is happening? We've got John O'Neill here, a.k.a. the Arcadian. We're what's gonna, going on? <laughs> we're going to play <laughs> some Skyrim uh, some Skyrim pinball to open up the evening for everybody. Yeah. Um, and, John, you mentioned today that um, that the, uh, the creator, the founder of, of Bethesda passed away today at the tender age of 74. 73 73 well then yeah. it just seems fitting to uh to start with this awesome skyrim pinball um john why don't you uh why don't you tell everybody why we're gathered here today uh dearly beloved we are gathered here today uh to get through this thing called uh rage quit volume two <laughs> to get through this thing it's, it's gonna be a task we're gonna have to do some level grinding we gotta go out and hit a bunch of mud crabs and oh, yeah. through this thing of listening to your album. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. We just got to, you know, just get get through, you know, at least the entirety of Splatterhouse because that game is impossible to play. Um, and only the faint of heart know how to get through the whole thing. So. <laughs> oh, damn. Um, well, shit, man. Like, I'm really happy that you gifted uh, me these games on Steam because I have... I've I've just been playing the three D pinball forever, yeah. Um, but which is a uh, classic. It's a classic. It's uh you know it's one pinball game, uh mm -hmm. whereas uh whereas FX three here this is many games that we've got here. Um, yep. We're gonna start with Skyrim, but I think we're definitely gonna have to um, play some of the other tables here uh, oh, later absolutely. on in the night. Um, what's your favorite FX three pinball table, dude? Uh, probably Monster Bash because it's my favorite Williams pinball machine, uh, ever. Um, they, it, it's just such a fantastic design, really cool play field. Um, and like, I mean, the wizard mode on it's just fantastic. It's, it's basically like universal monsters and rock music. It's like my two favorite things. <laughs> That's kind of a fitting uh, summation of the album that you've put together as well. <laughs> oh yeah pretty much yeah it's yeah. it's it's definitely a it's definitely starting to become a, a monster of its own creation because <laughs> i wasn't expecting to do a second one uh because the second one is basically a culmination of a bunch of songs that didn't make the first album and also just a bunch of stuff that i worked on throughout the pandemic which i thought was really cool and now I'm, now it's going to be a, i guess it's a series now so yeah are you are you aiming to do a number three as well or are we going to go oh for like god a whole... no <laughs> Not not for a while. This one, this one, I was really like, I don't know what songs to put on this after because I think I glossary and a rage quit encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah, I think I think if I if I go, let's see. As far as I could probably do as far as four volumes because I have the first one that's purple, second one is red, and then because I'm a Kiss fan, I got to do a blue and green one. So that's it. That's 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 my thought process on that. Nice. Oh wow. Okay. I have never played this part of the. Um, sorry, I'm just a little confused here with. Oh yeah, choose your choose your choose your weapons. Choose my weapons. and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh my god. What iron? You can buy stuff. <laughs> Fists. Or it's iron Skyrim, fists. dude. Oh my god. It is Skyrim. Wow. It, yeah. It's, it's on Alexa, and now it's on like a pinball machine. Like we're gonna do some real level grinding here. Um. Yep. Iron War Axe. Yeah, I want to equip that. Awesome. Oh, dude, and it comes up. What the. Mm -hmm. heck? Amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how do I get back to the previous menu? Uh, I believe it's uh, hold flippers. Hold both flippers. Hold both flippers. No, no, no. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Apparel. Uh, do I? I don't. I just have my ragged robes. Okay. Um, I keep wanting to use like W A S D or like, you know. I know. I know. <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay. Hold flippers back. There we go. Um, quit. All right. I think I only got the axe just now. What? There's an Imperial Guard here? Oh man. And um and I did want to say it felt like uh it felt like John like you just uh released an album too, like because you had um oh gosh, I keep I I have not seen such bravery. Yeah, the uh, Gauntlet EP. Yeah, the Gauntlet EP. That was just like what, in December? Uh yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I just I like I like putting out music, man. That's that's you know, you gotta you gotta do something to Pass the time during all this craziness. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time to woodshed, that's for sure, bud. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
All right, I think you're up. Oh, and Brian Stewart is gifting a bunch of, of, uh, of subscriptions. Brian, thanks for being such a team player, bud. Sorry, I'm going to move this window just so I can see the Oh, it's chat. all good. It a is all good. better. There we go. There we go. Brian, I'm glad I captured that <laughs> right as I was capturing. So oh, I was like, okay, man. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. And um, let's see. What do we want to say about your album? First of all, I think I need to point out your album artwork. You've been doing... Um, a lot of uh well pretty much all like pixel art for um for your albums uh do you do that yourself or do you get a guy to do that so there's a guy that does that um his he goes by his uh his alias is Shaka uh he's in he's from Indonesia um if you've seen any of the uh chip tunes equals win compilations uh he's done a handful of the artwork for those compilations and uh that's actually where I got introduced to his stuff so yeah. he's been he's been the go to guy for most of the releases now, with the um, with the only exceptions being the Wizard Rock releases that I've done in the past couple of years. Nice. And most of that stuff is from my girlfriend who does. She'll hand paint them and then we'll just like digitally scan it and then I'll just add some text over it. Nice, yeah. No, it sounds like you got the guy for the job. <laughs> oh yeah, he he's definitely definitely an amazing, very talented artist. So. I definitely like if if you need anything done artwork wise, de he's definitely the guy to hit up. Well, shoot, I think I pixel art wise, that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, pixel art. Well, I mean, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with pixel art for a video game music album. Um, yes, of course. <laughs> well, maybe tell us a little bit about what inspired you to do a volume two in the first place, other than you know just wanting to release music because of COVID. <laughs> and and the fact that I didn't have, I had a bunch of songs that didn't make the the cut the first time. Right. Um, well, so, the, I mean, the first one is, it was a passion project of mine to kind of cover songs from a bunch of games that I kind of grew up with over the years that at some point or another I got frustrated with. So, um, this is, I mean, this one is definitely no exception to that rule, so... Right, so you, um, you're you're not just like you know one of those poser artists. You've legit rage quit to the to the games that uh, that are. Oh, on this controllers! Album. Yeah, controllers have been thrown, cabinets have been smashed. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I've been kicked out. No, I haven't been kicked out of arcades, but now, um, but cabinets uh, have definitely. I I remember shaking a cabinet at one point. I was so frustrated, um, and it was like a multi cab, and I think it was playing Splatterhouse. It, that game is. I don't know why they made it so ridiculously hard, but. Uh, or maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just I'm not that great at playing video games. But uh, <laughs> which is, I mean, that's it's a fair fair statement to be to be said. But uh, you never know. I, that game is to me is probably one of the hardest arcade games I've ever played uh, in my lifetime as of right now. Oh man. Oh, oh sorry. Got... Are we allowed to. We're allowed to swear, right? We're allowed to swear. We're allowed to. Swear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Just say it. Fuck. I forgot to put up the. Um... Everybody in the chat, fuck, I forgot to put up the mature content warning, but um, but they'll get the picture pretty quick, I think. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're playing a game that where you basically, you know, can strip someone down and take all their clothes, so. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it, and you're killing dragons. Yeah, I've, God, the latency is, is starting to act up a little bit, but I'll, I right. think I'll, it's only the warm-up. It's only the warm-up, baby. Yeah. I'm going to get you. <laughs> So for those of you in the chat who might not know, we are not in the same space playing a hot seat pinball. We're actually using Parsec to uh, to connect. And so John's at a bit of a disadvantage with his latency. Uh, we're hosting from my computer, but nevertheless, he's uh, an amazing pinball player. And, um, and, and so, you know, it's a slight handicap. I feel like we're on a level playing field now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I won't. I won't be breaking like any billion scores or anything like that tonight. But uh, it'll it'll definitely be at least in the hundred millions. I hope. One can hope. <laughs> oh man, awesome. Well, hey, should we like? Um, because we're here for the album, right? Everybody here is is for the album and hopefully some pinball. So we're not gonna stop that. But do you want to get into one of your songs here? Yeah, let's go for it. All right, let's get ready to play the first track. So this one, oops, it's gonna pause because I'm shifting focus. Um, but no, anyways, it's all good. Do what you gotta um, do. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so the first track on uh, on Rage Quit Volume Two. This is from Katamari Damacy, and this is Fugue Number Seven Thousand Seven Hundred and Seventy Seven. <laughs>
Wow, yeah, there, were, there we are. And I think that that is such a... Uh, wait a minute, what do you mean you can't hear anything? You didn't hear that song at all? Oh, gosh. Audio is audio, back. Audio is back. Oh, maybe it's a Parsec thing. Wait a minute. So hold on. Did you guys hear the song or not? There was no sound for the song. Oh, what? Hold on a second here. Oh, man, that sucks. Oh, that was okay. I don't know why it was on monitor only. Well, that's okay because this song is like only a minute long. <laughs> <laughs> so good we're going to play it twice, technically four times because it's a repeat. <laughs> yeah, I, I never want to stop hearing this song. So now we're going to make sure that you hear it, everybody. Sorry for the confusion. We're keeping it super casual tonight. But uh, but anyways, here we go with, uh, with Fugue number 7,777 for the second time. <laughs> yes! <laughs> stream oh man well, we're doing I, it we're doing the thing as i meant to say previously um here i'll let you start playing again um, okay yeah we uh <laughs> i think that's such a really fitting way to open an album really and uh you know maybe i'm a little biased because runaway 4 did something like that with our first studio album um you know not with guitars and stuff we sang it but um but i really love like the I don't know, it's got like that kind of like Ying Wing Malmsteen kind of like, oh, I'm a neoclassical snob kind of vibe to it. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> oh, I drained both of those. That was terrible. Oh man. That's okay. That's okay though. Yeah, that was awesome. And you did you did that track all yourself. That was all you, right? You had that was like me, a, yes. a, a church organ at the ready to record that all authentically. Oh, sure. oh absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I uh I have access to many organs. Uh <laughs> that the Maybe musical kind no. <laughs> <laughs> guys i'm dexter <laughs> oh, we found him. you found me <laughs> oh god oh, sick man yeah no that was awesome i can't I can't say i didn't see that one coming <laughs> i oh, also man. have many organs as we all do <laughs> uh <laughs> Oh man! Speaking of many things, um, so maybe I, I I just thought it might be a fun idea if you can tell us of a time when you've rage quit to Katamari Damacy. Me? That's a pretty relaxing game, right? Like, I mean, you said that these were all like tracks that you've uh, authentically rage quit to. So, so maybe what 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 are some like common frustrations that you've had in Katamari Damacy? Or Katamari so in this general? this would be like a. St <clears throat> Because Katamari came out in like the early 2000s, so this is from the perspective of like a child Arcadian. So, oh, I um, be child Arcadian. <laughs> child Arcadian. Oh God. Oh, baby, um, guitar, maybe. Dude. I mean, I mean, the official fifth anniversary is coming up, so we could probably make that. <laughs> get some, get some people to Photoshop some stuff. I don't know. Um, 
Yeah, so I was a kid when I first played that game, and I th I thought the controls were so confusing at the time, and I, I don't know. I mean, like, as anyone probably thought when they first played this game, it was so weird, and it was so different compared to anything else that Namco had put out completely. And so, uh, I mean, yeah, so it was like it was in a whole other world of its own. Um but I think I think I got the hang of it up until I think the third or fourth level of that game, and then I just I just gave up. <laughs> I was just like this. I think after like the fifth try on the fourth level, I was just like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Even the remaster, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm just done. <laughs> Aw, I did. Yeah, enjoy it's still it's a great game though. I love it. It's it's fantastic. The music's great. Yeah, the music's amazing, and and it is very kind of like confusing and disorienting, especially. Yeah, I don't. Know, it's just it's just like Japanese to the max, you know. Um, oh yeah, just all the non sequiturs and and like what the hell is this kind of thing. Um, mm. Yeah, um, I, I I do love Katamari. There's definitely been some um, some frustrating points for me just around. Um, I don't know, like, like I always feel like I don't have the skills. Like, I'm able to get through the levels and stuff like that, but I, I just know that there's, there must be like some higher level of the, uh, of the Katamari meta that I'm missing out on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool. Well, we've got another track lined up because there are ten tracks on this album. Um, yeah. Next up, we've got um, a track from Spyro. I haven't ever actually played Spyro, so what's this track? We should play Spyro sometime. That is oh. <laughs> one of my favorite games. Um, Spyro is, um, uh, I mean, what? I, there really isn't much I can say about Spyro than the fact that it fucking rules. Um, it's it was Spyro for me. Um, it is one of my favorite games growing up because of um, it was one of the first games that I played on the PlayStation, and it was also one of the first video games I ever got introduced to by my mom. And that was one of the games that we would play together when I was little. Um, and um, what you're going to hear in this one is the title theme and uh, my favorite level from the first game, Dark Hollow. Uh, I thought the the entire atmosphere of that level uh, was just so captivating and just like there was so much stuff to do. There were so many secrets in that level alone, just like when I first played it. And it just... Yeah, even the remat again because all these games are getting remastered now. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> Is the there remaster be a Rage Quit Volume Two remastered? <laughs> <laughs> Probably with real drums. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that would be great. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's one of my favorite levels in the first game. Uh, the music's done by Stuart Copeland of the Police. Um, easily like one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. So, some really good music. So. Cool. And what uh, what would be a fitting pinball table for us to play while we listen to this one? Oh, Medieval Madness. Medieval Madness. Okay. Yeah, because there's dragons. There's dragons. Not that Skyrim didn't have dragons, but this one's more like classic dragons, and it's got Tina Fey. Wait, Tina Fey is in this? Yeah, she does the voices of some of the princesses. Oh, sick. Okay. This is yeah. This was one of the this is one of her first gigs that she did uh, when she was with uh, the Second City Comedy Group in Chicago. Because Williams was based out of Chicago. Um, should we do Zen setup or arcade setup? I don't know what the difference is. Oh, old school. Let's do arcade setup. Arcade. A Zen set. Zen setup. I think the only thing that changes is like gravity differences. So if you want it to feel like the actual pinball machine, then do arcade, or we can just do Zen and just like just play it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm all about the classic. Let's do it. Cool. Let's do it. Awesome, everybody. This is um, this is title and Dark Hollow from Spyro.
Well, that's fitting. We just uh, <laughs> we just got in the castle for the end of that one. That was cool. Yeah, and you hit the you you destroyed the castle right in time with uh right with, in the transition. Yeah, right in the transition. <laughs> awesome. Right when it hit, I was like, oh heck yeah. <laughs> Dang, man. I really like that take on that Spyro theme. That was awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, I've, I've never played Spyro, but I think I will have to check it out. It, it feels like one of those franchises that I've just, like, been totally uh, ignorant of, you know. It's it's definitely uh, it's definitely one of the more... I, I don't even think it's underrated anymore now that it's gotten such a resurgence from the remaster. But uh, I would say in light of like, you know, in terms of like Crash Bandicoot, everything that was going on for the PlayStation, I don't think it was really looked at that heavily, in my opinion, but uh, definitely some of like the better games in the PS1 library for sure. Yeah, definitely. I never had a That's PS1. That's just a personal opinion. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> that sounds like an educated one, at least. Um, yeah, so what what is a point in Spyro? uh that you um that you got really frustrated at what did you what made you rage quit at spyro dark hollow <laughs> dark dark hollow um there's a secret uh like cave area that has this giant um nor they're called norks um they're supposed to be like a cross between like a gnome and an orc um but there's this really big burly one that had this uh metal armor on i couldn't beat you can't kill it with fire um and like it always like kept bumping me off the thing and uh again five-year-old me was just like no nah, I, I ain't doing this i don't <laughs> i don't have to take this <laughs> so yeah controllers are definitely thrown in that game and also it's just like because of um how the controls are for a classic playstation one controller without analog sticks and all that. this is before analog sticks people so um this i uh yeah, I just had a really difficult time with like moving around in general and I think but that is one of the first games that I completed later on in life. Um I think it's 120% that you can get on that game and I did that I think a couple years ago. Um I think I live streamed that or something like that. But it's it's definitely a fun one to beat when you collect like all the treasure, get all the dragons, get all the dragon eggs and yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> Sick dude. Uh and, and yeah, really awesome to play medieval to that track too. It definitely felt like we were in like some fantasy metal realm there. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, speaking of uh, of like, well, maybe not fantasy, more horror. I think moving on to the next track. Uh, this one's from Castlevania Three. Do you want to say anything about it, John? Uh, this game rips. Enjoy <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't even think I need to explain this one. <laughs> Awesome. And we're we're probably just going to stick on the uh the medieval madness here for this one, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, I think it's totally fitting. All right, guys, this one is Demon Seed. Enjoy.
Yeah, that's really um dude. Holy cow. That was Rock, uh Brad. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, that was like a real headbanger. Um I was I was saying, you know, behind the behind the scenes, although everyone can see maybe the lip readers in the in the chat knew what I was saying, but um but I was gonna bring up your guitar tone, man, because it's like really sharp and biting and just like it feels like that track is just like sinking into my skin it's so awesome dude i i try and go towards a lot of guitar tones that um i really enjoy from like albums from the mid to late 80s um george lynch has a lot of tones like that um i think there's only one album i can think of where he's scooping the mids just a little bit but most of the time i don't even do that i i really like to try and keep them as bright as possible um because i'm I don't know, I'm a huge Brian May fan and his tone's kind of a little in the bright factor. And um I, I don't know, I just I really like the ability to like when I when it squeals, like when I do like pinch squeals, they soar through the entire track. I love hearing stuff like that. So Yeah, dude, yeah, your yeah. influence is uh is really showing in your tone, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and all for the better too. Um Yeah. Yeah, so so what uh I I don't know. This seems like a really silly question, but what frustrated you in Castlevania 3? <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing. Oh man. This is this is high school me getting into uh retro gaming and uh I was just like this game fucking sucks. <laughs> That's this what we had thing. to do, man. That's I know, what we I know. had in the in the day. I know. <laughs> I think I think I remember specifically. Uh, I think this was at a buddy's house when I played this game for the first time, and uh, his dad was watch. Uh, my friend's dad was watching me play it, and he was like, "Oh, I used to play this game a bunch." And I was just like, "This game fucking sucks." And he's like, "Yep, good time." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Sorry, that's you actually. I don't want. Uh, yeah, that's no. me. It's okay. I'm holding it. I'm holding it. You're holding it. Yeah. It's still captured. <laughs> yep, <laughs> You're we're good. holding it. Oh god. I ain't, um... I ain't losing the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot, man. Oh man. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we're, we're just moving right along here. Um, we've got kind of like, I don't know. I, I can kind of see why some of this, uh, this next track, uh, the game from it might, uh, might be a little frustrating. So what do you want to intro this one? Um, this is the level that I rage quit on. <laughs> wow. Specifically. That's, a, yep. that's a really good preview. Very thorough and specific. <laughs> yep. And, and, and I hope the music shows. <laughs> Okay, well, sh should we let the uh, should we let the um, the pinball game show it too? What would be a really good one for this track? This one probably too, honestly. You just want it's to very... play Medieval Madness. That's all you wanted the... to do. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad table for most it's of these. Great for table. most of these. Um, <laughs> well, let's see where are we at. Are we on ball two? Probably by the time this song ends, we can move to another table. Okay, okay, I like the sound of that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, in that case, maybe I'll say for the uh, for the chat's knowledge, this is a track from Donkey Kong Country 2. And uh, and the track title is Flight of the Zinger. Here we go. <laughs>
We're going to play the free one. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to play, what is it, Fishtails. <laughs> Fishtails, the, the one that you get with the game. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, this one doesn't have any uh, IP, does it? There's no, but no copyrights on this one. No, nah, just an original. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, they made it look decent, at, at, at least. Um, oh, yeah, it's, it's still a good one. Yeah, dude, uh, you were getting lots of props in the chat for covering um, a level that uh, that you don't hear very often. I've only heard like two in my lifetime, and like I'm I'm glad I could contribute to that song because like everyone does Sticker Bush, but you know there's no love for Flight of the Zinger. <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's the it's the truth. <laughs> yeah, no, and you gave it a lot of love, dude. I was getting um. I don't know. There were there were parts of that uh, of that arrangement when I was like, oh, I can totally like, you know, picture fucking arch enemy up on stage ripping this, you know, like very oh, absolutely. fucking melodic death metal is awesome. There you go. Yeah, it's Dio's it's Dio's instrumental intro. <laughs> yeah, everything everything involves Dio with me. So <laughs> oh, f in the chat for Dio. Shit. Oh man, I'm so excited about everything that's coming out for him. They're doing a whole. I mean, I just kind of go off on on a tangent. Yeah, yeah. Dio talk about stuff, Dio. Go. I'm, I love Dio. Um, they're doing a whole archival uh, re-release of a bunch of stuff that he's doing, and they're releasing the last two live albums he did with the Dio band, and they're also doing expanded versions of Heaven and Hell and the Mob Rules from Black Sabbath with like live cuts from live shows, and it's just uh, I'm so. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad he's getting the treatment he deserves <laughs> musically. Yeah, I miss Dio. I miss him a lot. Oh man, he favorite... was a good dude. Yeah, my favorite moment um, of, of like anything Dio was when um, it was that a headbangers journey that documentary that was mm -hmm. like out way back when. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> and he's just like, I, I think it was just being um, a little cheeky towards Gene. Um, Jeans, yeah, Jeans. Oh yeah, when he's talking about the the event, the the, the origin of, of the double like, horns. Oh, but of course, Gene invented shoes and air and and orange juice. <laughs> and, yeah, well, because that's I mean that's how that's how he thinks. He's a businessman, but like there's yeah there's a lot of religious origins from from that symbol, and it's it's cool that I mean I Dio is the originator of that. There's no question about that. I mean, uh, Gene kind of does this, which is like, you know, it's a, another symbol for love. Oh, yeah, I always so joke it because that's the like, sign language for I love you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, so it's like, you know, he didn't really invent that. <laughs> you know, you don't, you, I mean, it's not like he's patent. I, I, I've, it'd be weird if he did a patent for it, but I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I do miss Dio. He was a really cool dude. I got to meet him uh like six months before he died and he was just the coolest guy wow coolest dude. guy yeah coolest guy ever i have to find that picture it's on my facebook somewhere but it's like 13 year old me with dio and this was like december of the last tour he did with uh the dio uh heaven and hell it's like dio sabbath but it, they had to yeah. name it something else yeah of course <laughs> yep <laughs> oh man well dude that's incredible good for you mm -hmm. yeah um, cool. Do we want to prep people on the next track? Um, Star Fox, man. Star Fox, yes. What, right. what can you say about Star Fox? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's a good, good game. That's all I yep. can say. Yeah. Star you know, Fox everyone... and Fishtails. <laughs> <laughs> it's, hey, we're, we've got animals. Okay. And, yep. and we've got, uh, monster fish. And so I think we're covered. I think we have our bases covered on this one. Yeah, and we got Slippy down there on the on the bottom right bumper there. Exactly. Yeah. See, you're already killing it. Posing nude. Um. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go play pinball with uh, with nude Slippy. We'll see you on the other side of this Star Fox track. Star Fox track, guys. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Very Man, this nice. Table sucks. Yeah, that table sucks. Why would they make that the first table that you have to play? Because they want you to buy stuff. <laughs> but that makes me not want to buy stuff. Having a table that sucks. I know. I know. <laughs> Capitalism oh. is, a, is a wonderful thing. Oh, man. Well, you know what doesn't suck is that song. Dude. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks. I, oh, I, oh, you're welcome. Oh, yeah. We're having a good time here tonight. <laughs> Oh man. oh man. Yeah, I think you were talking about the mix a little bit while we were playing pinball there. Yeah, that's that was definitely one of the tougher mixes for me and um I mean the the cool thing about Rage Quit is that um for the most part at least for the first one um I recorded everything, uh, sequenced uh all the MIDI and all that stuff and uh mixed and mastered that one myself and it's 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 a self for me it's like an evolving process of uh of self-producing and engineering and all that stuff. And um and just kind of kind of honing those skills a little bit, and that one was a struggle and a half because I was dealing with patches that uh, I lost completely like a year and a half ago uh, when my pedal board decided to crash on me. Thanks, Line Six. Oh, um, nasty. <laughs> but um yeah, so I basically had to run with those mixes, and um yeah, I can But I do like how the guitars are very in your face on that one. It's very like almost like guns and roses inspired in, in a way. So I kind of, I kind of like that about that. So there, it's a little unique thing about that song. Yeah. It definitely serves the song that mix. Oh yeah. 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 I like, I like that. It's in your face. That's like, it's that level is so great too. And it just, yeah. Also another level that doesn't really get a whole lot of covers. So yeah, I'm all definitely. about the deep cuts, all about the deep cuts. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we're halfway through the album now. Um, I, I just want to make sure that people know where to get it so that we can use the Twitch command Rage Quit 2. If you want to yeah. get some links in the chat there, make sure you head on over to uh, the Arcadians Bandcamp and pick that up. It is Bandcamp Friday, so you know that all of the, the uh, purchases there are going to go 100% to this guy. Um, totally, not well. <laughs> totally not planned. Totally not planned. As well, uh, John, you've got a new um, Teespring merch store uh, up with a bunch of your album art designs and other designs as well, and you can get that printed on just about anything these days. I got a fanny pack that's based on the Rage Quit series, so if you want to pick that up. <sighs> Man, yeah, it's, it's I, I dope. like unironically <laughs> enjoy having a fanny pack as a summer accessory. How are you going to store your arcade tokens? It's not going to be in your pockets. No, fuck that, man. No. Your pockets are going to get holes in it, and then you can lose all your tokens. Exactly. And those are these are industrial-grade fanny I actually have no idea, but I've heard they're really good. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> hey, if they're durable, you got to have a durable fanny. It has um, to be durable. Otherwise, they wouldn't be selling it. Yeah. <laughs> just like, just like trust really I cheaply trust printed. Just made of paper. <laughs> like, oh, no, my tokens. <laughs> the All the T-shirts are made of, like, like cardstock. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, no. oh, now I'm just imagining that. Okay. Just a small <laughs> it's not. Side... I swear. Teespring is great. Just a small sidetrack. Um, just because you made me think of texture. But, like, um, here's a little fun brain fuck is like if you look at an object and think about what it would feel like with your tongue you will know yeah. like if if you look at something you're like if i lick that i know exactly how it's going to feel i yep. uh, i learned that recently and it, it's just kind of blown my mind it's um, it's the weirdest it's the weirdest thing i don't know how uh the senses know how to predict those kind of things but it's is like that from like being babies and like always putting stuff in our mouths I don't even know. I mean, probably, but like, and then I guess we don't really, you know, consciously think about that. So that could be a possibility. I don't know. <laughs> I, I ain't the guy that came up with a the theory. <laughs> I just know it's true. <laughs> yeah. Just like you instantly know that's true. You're, you're like, yeah. I'm not even going to look that up. I'm not even going to fact check that. That's yeah. I can. It's, I, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just it's a true. thing, you know, the sky is blue sometimes, the but it's not really blue. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to move right along here to our sixth track on this album. Um, and this is from Splatterhouse. I have never played Splatterhouse in my life. I bet it uh, caused you a lot of frustration back in the day. Uh, oh, yeah. Is there anything that you want to say about this track before we start playing it? She didn't have to die, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's from the second one, I think. But the uh, it, the it's the meaning is still valid. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And I feel like um I, I 
Sorry, Fishtails. You're wonderful to somebody, I'm sure, but you're definitely not going to fit in with Splatterhouse. So what's a good um, what's a good game that we can get on here? Hmm. Let's see. If you have Monster Bash, that means you have Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yep. Yeah. So let's okay. do Creature from the Black Lagoon. Awesome. And we're going to keep Favorite it Favorite horror zen. movie of all time, by the way. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, well then uh then here we go everybody. This is Splatterhouse. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's a good one. Yeah. And yeah. It's a good game. <laughs> playing the, the good Black game. Lagoon was like really fitting too. Oh, absolutely. I feel like Jump's about to rage quit this pinball. Uh, you, <laughs> you're you not wrong. <laughs> Trust I just, me. I think when, when, all this, when all this dies down and I'm actually able to go to Vancouver, I, I think we're going to actually try and – I would love to try and actually do just like a live stream where we're in the same room playing pinball. Like I want to do amazing. that at some point. I would that would be totally so much that. fun. Oh, man. There's a really that would be good, so uh, much fun. <laughs> there's a really good pub here in Vancouver called Pub 340, and if it survives the, the COVID popocalypse, then, you know, it's got an amazing pinball selection. Um, well, not even that. I think – I know that Vancouver's got a pinball expo. So, like, or I don't know if they still do it, but I know that they used to have one for the longest time, and they had, like, every possible table you can imagine. T pinball, ta pinball machines that you couldn't even, like – you didn't even know existed. Like, I think um, – 
One of my favorite guys to watch is Jack Danger. He works with Stern and all that stuff, and he's got a Twitch channel as well, and he plays pinball on that. But um, one of the ones that he did years ago uh, was at, I think, the Vancouver Pinball Expo, and it was a Qbert machine, and it had um, these, like, like, the side lanes where your ball would drain. There were actually flippers there, so you can actually, like, knock the ball back on the play field without draining your ball. I thought that was, like, the weirdest thing to me. <laughs> yeah, that seems a little OP. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. Dang, dude. I didn't even know there was a Vancouver Pinball Expo, so I don't know if it still goes on. I think on. it was I mean... Vancouver. I could I could be wrong, but I think it was Vancouver. And this was, like, I think 2016, 2017, something like that. Okay. So I don't know. Dang. Well, it wasn't on my radar, but, um, but yeah, we did have, like, um, a really good, like, um, like, it was called John's Jukes, and it, it was just like a place where they would take in like really, I have a place <laughs> and and and, uh, and old pinball machines. Actually, I wanted to buy a pinball machine from there um, back when I like first moved to Vancouver. I was like, yeah, oh great, yeah, why not? I, I just moved to like one of the most expensive cities. Why don't I just pick up a pinball machine? Uh, you know, as you should. Yeah, as you should. That's a sound financial uh, decision. Absolutely. Um, but they had like this Donkey Kong uh, pinball table that I was like, oh man, okay. My inter the intersection of like two strong interests for me, yeah, that's hard to turn down. Donkey, and, Donkey and, Kong uh, pinball, that sounds interesting. I know there's a Pac Man one that Bally did, but uh, I've I've never heard of a Donkey Kong one. The Super Mario Brother ones that Gottlieb did, those ones are really really good. Those I, are the miniature I think those ones, are fantastic. Right? There's one miniature one, and then yeah. there's one full-size one. Okay. I played the miniature one a lot growing up because there was a golf and games a couple of cities down from us that uh, that had that. And, oh, man, I spent so many so that many tokens out of, my, out of my fanny pack spent on that it's... game. <laughs> <laughs> a crazy, so crazy this time. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel oh. chair is sick. Thank you so much. It's Spider-Man. Oh, nice. My... Is that I'm, I'm picking favorites. I... No, it's not an endorsement. I wish. <laughs> I wish, dude. I don't stream enough to get endorsed. Yet. <laughs> Apparently, I, I don't back either. The streaming game. Oh, dude, I know I, you. I, you stream more, way more than I do. Oh man. Well, I don't know if it's if it's necessarily a badge. Um, <laughs> oh, the Super Mario I think it is. Pinball is the hardest thing you've ever played. Is that true, Mike? Oh man, that's um, uh, that was a really it's a fun tough one. one. I liked it. It is because... a tough one. Because like when you when you got to the ball lock, you actually like played a level of Mario up on the um, up on the screen there, and you know you just could like run or jump. It was just like an auto scroller, I guess. But it was really hard, and I got to it a couple times. It's yeah, it is definitely really hard. But my love for Mario, I can't uh, I can't go and play other pinball games when Mario's standing there. It's a me. <laughs> <laughs> You gonna play my pinball? <laughs> Are you gonna play my pinball? <laughs> That's how real life Mario would sound. It's been it's been thirty five years now, guys. It's been thirty five. Mario years, doesn't yeah. sound. Mario's not up and cheer, up being chippy no. and all that anymore. He's got a he's got smoker's lung. He's got smoker's lung, a little bit of whiskey lung, yeah. <laughs> whiskey throat. Oh my gosh. Pretty much. Yeah, the Deadpool pinball is amazing. That's one of my favorites. And Stern's um, killing it. Yeah, I yeah, love totally. Stern. Speaking of killing it, you're killing it with this next track coming up. This is oh, one geez. that uh, that was not exclusively featured on this album, I should say. Um, <laughs> one of one of two of them, yes. Yeah. Oh, wait. Did we have one of those otherwise, or is that coming um, up still? The second one. It's coming. No, it's coming up. It's coming okay. up. I don't think it's happened yet. Awesome. But this one was on um, the Dance Macabre Seven, which was released last Halloween, wasn't it? I think this that's the I think that's the second to last track on the album. What, Night Trap? Oh, or, or no no no. Yeah, so Night Trap was from <laughs> Dwelling of Duels. That's right. That's where I heard yeah. it. Okay, yes. And then yeah. The, yeah, and then the, the later one which we won't spoil right now. Uh, yeah. you know, for all like two people who haven't gone and bought the album already. Hashtag go buy which the is, album. Um, go buy the album. It's great. And it's for a good cause too. <laughs> What's the cause? Uh, I think it's going it's going to a really nice charity. I forgot what the charity was at this point because it's been a while since we've done the album. Yeah. But I know that all the proceeds go to charity. Yeah. No, that's really noble of them. So that's a good cause. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, well, I, I was talking about going and buying your album, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you didn't know where I mean, the money for you, that was going, you... I would be like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's going it's going towards uh future creations of music and also sometimes charity. 
Yeah, so, definitely. I, yeah, well, I usually donate to Child's Play. Yeah, you're a charitable person. There we go. Awesome. I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, nevertheless, this next track has been featured on a previous Dwelling of Duels month, and it is Night Trap, and it is now. <laughs> Heck a raid. Yeah. What's up, Vinalia oh and Co? Awesome. Thanks for being here. We are having uh, the listening party for John O'Neill, a.k.a. The Arcadian. He's Hello. releasing his new album, Rage Quit Volume 2, and we are playing pinball to celebrate. Hi, hi, hi. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, so, dude, Night Trap. Um, what uh, what made you decide to do that song from that game? <laughs> um, it's such a... I mean, the Sega CD is such a weird uh, console in itself, so I, I thought it would be really cool. At least out of those kind of games, I really liked that song, and um, I, mo I mean, I really liked the idea of putting that song in more of a Van Halen uh, aspect. And right around the time when I was doing this for Dwelling of Duels 
Eddie Van Halen passed away, and I'm like, well, this is gonna this ha- this is my tribute then. So, cause like, so I tried to make it as Van Halen as possible, adding like different possible eras of Van Halen into it. Um, you know, like the the David Lee Roth like little like high pitched, you know, ah, you know stuff like that. And, <laughs> you know, and I don't sing like David Lee Roth. I I sound like Sammy Hagar more than anything. Yeah, I feel like so. Uh, I that's that's another era of you know whether you like them or not. I I like Van Hagar just as much. So, <laughs> but also I mean, but the cool thing about that is is that I I made that patch, and it's and it's the closest sounding Eddie Van Halen patch I could ever. Like I think I've ever achieved in terms of like when I when I was creating tones for this song. So it was that that one uh, has unique tones specifically for that song, and it because to sound like Van Halen. So nice, dude. Yeah, I'd say yep. a very accurate recreation. What are you Thank using you. to uh, to put your put your G through, bro? What would what you put your guitar through? <laughs> what's what's my rig? Um, so. <laughs> So the early days, uh, and I still use it from time to time because I have some really cool like Megadeth patches and stuff from a bunch of things. And um, um, but I I started out with a Line Six HD 500X because um, I really liked that. It had a really bunch really, really cool amp models and stuff like that. And yeah, then that was the one, man. <laughs> when yeah, pretty much. And then um, I think halfway through the first Arcadian tour for playing with power. Uh, the <laughs> coincidentally, the uh, the power <laughs> went completely kaput. Um, I guess the guy that was handling my stuff, uh, ripped it was either me or someone that was messing with my stuff, uh, ripped the power jack out and uh, completely ruined it. So, uh, I it was it was I couldn't use it for a while and then I, I just repaired it recently so I can use it again. But the replacement for that, what I'm currently using for both bass and guitar sounds. Is the uh, the Line Six HX Stomp nice? So, which so I, that way I can use all the Helix stuff. Yeah, dude. Yeah, well, you're yep. uh, you're definitely putting it to work. You're getting some, you're getting your money's worth out of that thing. I'd say. Thanks. <laughs> you real cute. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know why that's our thing tonight. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I cute. just love. I, we're all Gerald Broflowski. I I drive the hybrid. Thanks. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Classic moment. Oh man, love the Marvel chair, man! So much love for the Marvel chair. I, I I forgot what it was. I think it's um, I think it's Neo gaming chairs. They have a whole line of Marvel gaming chairs, and uh, I this one specifically is the classic Spider Man one. And I know they have a Miles Morales one, Iron Man, Captain America, uh, Neo gaming chairs. I believe is what the company is. So, yep. dang man, I need a chair. And, and they're comfy. And they're comfy. <laughs> They're uh, really Ian's good. Gotta run. We'll see you later, Ian. Thanks for stopping by. Bye, Ian. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I, I would have to go with the Spider-Man as uh, one as well. The Miles Morales one specifically, that would be. Oh yeah, be amazing. it's it's a good one. <laughs> well, we're coming um, pretty close to the end of the album here. Um, oh, but I won't we got three more tracks left. Um, yeah, what, okay, and this one I do not know anything about. Do you want to tell us a little bit about, uh, Soviet Jump Game? What the heck is this thing? Soviet Jump Game is a new game. Um, it came out, I think, two years ago now? One, one or two years ago? You said Um, it was new. No, just kidding. (laughs) It's kind of new. It's, it's, it's new, but it's not. Um, this is a, this is a very, this is a Battle Royale type game. Um, it takes place in Soviet Russia. Um, it's created by, uh, it's a collaborative effort from Fantastic Passion and the Game Grumps, uh, the, the, the famous Game Grumps. Yeah. Those um, ones. Yeah. It's, it's the only ones you can think of. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a fantastic game. Uh, I, I mostly did it cause I really like the song. Uh, but, uh, just the concept of battle Royale games just make you want to rage quit anyway, like Fortnite and uh tetris 99 if you play that on the switch and yep. you know stuff like that so yeah. <laughs> but it's it's a it's a great track it reminds me of uh tetris and yeah it's i that's all i can say about it okay is there an appropriate uh table that we should play also are you holding a key because my menu is going wild am i holding a key i'm not holding a key weird well, I just I just did a thing. Oh, oh. maybe some maybe something happened. I don't know. Okay. Well, Ma- what are we going to Maybe play because for this I had the controls. Right. We can play. <laughs> we can unlock Family Guy. No, I'm just joking. No. <laughs> um, the, let's see the, the what we got. IRL, going on. I don't know which one. Uh... Let's see what we got. Uh, we could do. 
I guess Sorcerer's Lair? Yeah. Okay. That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. All right, let's try it out. Okay, and uh, and here is Moscow Streets. <laughs> Dang, dude, that's awesome! Yeah, it's short and sweet. Short and sweet, uh, and it's new. It's only two years old. It's new, <laughs> but it sounds old, and it's cool, and it's red, and it's hip, and it's now. Oh man, there, there's a, <clears throat> there's a part in that song that do 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 do. It's kind of got like I don't know, like some kind of like Latin jazz thing going on, but it reminds me oh, yeah. very much of um, a technical death metal band from France. Uh, called Gorod, and they have a they get a little cheeky sometimes. Sometimes they do like <laughs> like gypsy jazz and and uh, you know bust out all their grandpa's guitars. Um, <laughs> the grandpa's <laughs> guitars just sits on them. Yeah, they yeah, got a song like called Varangi in Paradise, and it gets kind of cheeky like that with a little bit of like a swing and just kind of like ah, oh, it's it's so good, dude. I love bopping to that tune. I think we were both Wait. just kind of moving our heads back and forth a lot to that one. Would would you say that it has a lot of gag? A lot of what? A lot of a lot of you know, just a lot of lot of gag. La jazz. Oh lot yeah, you, lot these gag. guys did up in here. Got room for <laughs> you, any more jazz? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you'd get it. Dude, you just gotta you... it just gotta have a little bit more gag, you know? Oh yeah, we gotta zazz this up. <laughs> yes, guys, we have to have a little more zazz. Oh my god. I think I did I all five of those voices at uh, at Ultimate. There was a moment when uh, <laughs> between some oh, sets, man. I was just yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yep. Yeah, I love Metalocalypse. There, I love Brendan Small. He's so great. <laughs> oh man, if only if only it continued on into the. Uh... We need season five. <laughs> we need season five. They were they we were building up five. to so Bring it much, back. and it kind of ended up going nowhere because they were like, "We don't know how long we're gonna be a show." Adult Swim didn't know either, and then you know there's so much demand for it. I think that's why they did the Doomstar Requiem because it answered a lot of questions about like the history of past members and stuff like that, and like who they are. But there's still so many questions left unanswered, like. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't help anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like there must have been like a part to that show where they're just like, no, this is the angle. 
we just want to keep people guessing and and not really offer any closure on anything because yeah, that's so I know. brutal. Yeah, if if it happens, it happens. That's that's all I can that that's all I can see happening from that. If it happens, it happens. <laughs> what do you most can't the least? <laughs> what do you want? What what do you most can't the least? <laughs> and they're having all the uh, oh my god fingers crossed forever. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, bring season five, please. Oh man, I I love that we're just like playing pinball and talking about. Metalocalypse and it's listening dream. to your this album, is, dude. It's the absolute dream. The album, I mean, album aside, this is the dream. Yeah, <laughs> That's all I want to do. I just want to play pinball all day with you, man. That's all I wanted to oh, do. Dang, dude. Well, we should maybe we can do like some regular pinball thing. Like, I mean, FX three is fun, but like we can do, like do like bonus, I don't know bonus stage X maybe bonus stage X. Oh shoot, man. I mean, yeah, we can play more of this for sure. I was thinking like, oh, yeah. oh maybe we could do like something semi regularly and just like dig into pinball a little bit more play some oh, different like talk games about, and stuff talk about tables and stuff yeah man cuz i don't That'd have cool. anybody to do that shit with i mean you're definitely like more of the uh more of the expert on the tables and stuff than i am oh my god there's the... that's that's a that's a huge stretch <laughs> but, <laughs> but like i uh i mean i like i like i like pinball yeah just as much as you do so well i feel I, I like, feel like... Well, I mean, I know you're a fan of the game. Not to say that you're not a fan of the game, but I feel like I'm a fan of the game, and you're like a fan of the tables because you know much more about that realm than I do. I like the history behind a lot of them. I'm always, I've with anything that I am passionate about, I like knowing like the behind the scenes stuff about it. So, um, yeah, with with pinball specifically, like knowing that I, I'm just like a human encyclopedia. I have useless information that is will be valuable at some point in time. Yeah, well, we can we can make it valuable by making it relevant and doing something. Yeah, doing something again in the future. I like that idea. That's really fun. That would be that'd be really cool, actually. Yeah, I'd be. I'm totally down. Sweet. Okay. Cool. Oh yes, Ranja. Ranja is like X X X bonus stage X. What is that? That's like your what? That's like Neo or no? What's what's that freaking old dating site? It wasn't dating site, but like. I saw it on MySpace a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's I don't know. That's like the <laughs> turn turn of the turn of the millennium kind of <laughs> kind of yeah. username shit. Oh yeah. man. Anyways, I think we're going to get on to our next track here. Um this one is from Medieval and it's called The Legend of Dan Fortesque. Who the heck is Dan Fortesque? Oh, AOL. Okay. Canadian here. Sorry, I didn't have AOL. Um <laughs> <laughs> We use Messenger, MSN Messenger up here in Canada. I used it when I was living in Europe, so yeah, I don't remember AOL. Oh man. But yeah, anyways, um the legend of Dan Fortesque. Do you wanna let us know the legend of Dan Fortesque or is that gonna be thoroughly explained? Forti- <laughs> I think you're missing a U and an E there, buddy. Dan Fortesque. I- for for the ski. For the ski? <laughs> Dan- Daniel, Daniel Fortesque. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that could be like a Grim Fandango kind of thing. That'd be cool. Daniel Daniel Fortesque. Fortesque. <laughs> um, Fort- Fortesque. Um, yeah, so uh, Medieval, uh, I've had a long, long and love-hate relationship with because it was one of the games that I played on a demo disc for so many years, and so I could only play, like, the first two levels of it. Um, and I didn't play the full game until I got into high school, and that's when I found out how hard some of that can be because it's the same thing with uh, most PlayStation 1 games, um, you know, especially when you don't have a, a dual shot or a controller that has analog sticks on it. You get you get the, the D-pad friction and all that stuff, and it's just like, it's not a good time. It's never a good time. <laughs> never a good time. Uh, I remember never a good time. With, I remember going home from one of my neighbor's places uh, after playing King of Monsters 2, and mm-hmm. I had like like literal blisters on my on my thumb, and my mom looked at it like you're never playing video games again. I'm like, haha. Well, that didn't really turn out in her favor. <laughs> look uh, at me now, mother. <laughs> yeah, look at me now on the internet playing video games, and people are watching. And I uh, I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah. So I, what's I mean, it feels like a silly question. What's going to be a good table for this one? You think? Oh, Monster Bash. Monster Bash. Awesome. Yeah. All right, let's get to Monster Ten Bash. 10 minutes of Monster Bash. Yes, that's right. This is a longer track, so we're going to really get, get this into the- a big the, boy. Uh, it's, you got you to gotta tell the legend right, man. There's a lot of stuff that happens. Yeah, there's a lot of exposition, right? It is. It totally is. 
Cool. It's all a right. it's it's a very in depth game. I couldn't really cover one song. I had to do I had to do this is also the longest song I think I've ever done for the Arcadian. So Wow. All right. We're gonna break a yep. record here tonight. Okay, cool. Uh yep. maybe we'll hit a high score too. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. We'll see what happens. This one's a good one though. All right. And this one do you wanna correct me on the pronunciation of this one? Just to start us <laughs> you off. Yeah. No, you don't have to go. I don't I'm not gonna do this it. Go is for the it. Legend of Dan Forteske. <laughs> Forteske! Forteske! <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> In a time long ago, there lived in the kingdom of Galamir a sorcerer named Zerok. This arrogant, pitiless man hated his fellow citizens for their simple and peaceful ways. So he raised an army of demons and set out to take the realm for his own. The king's champion, Sir Daniel Fortescue, led the militia into battle against this unholy horde. Songs are still sung about how he spearheaded the charge deep into the accursed multitude, how demons fell before him like beef before the scythe, and how at last, though mortally wounded, he destroyed the sorcerer utterly. Fortescue went down in history that day as the hero of Galamir, and a time of peace began which was to last for a hundred years. And then, the sorcerer returned.
Dang, dude. Yeah, just like the title implies, that song is a legend. Man, it's what a, legend. a journey. It's a legend of Dan Fortesque. <laughs> Fortesque. Fortesque. So, yeah, that's um the whole that whole medley is uh is like a sequence of levels going up to the boss battle. Uh, uh, that last like 5 Five four sequence was a or one two three yeah five yeah uh, yeah Ronja it, called it, it. <laughs> that's that's the that's the boss battle theme so yeah no that's yeah. that's so intense and that was really fun table to play uh, to that music too man oh yeah absolutely you should just like make a, a soundtrack an original soundtrack all for pinball don't tempt me man <laughs> oh man well the last listening party we had last week was for a guy who like made his own music to his own shmup that that never came out <laughs> so well you know, so very fitting so there is a thing that we could do mm -hmm. if if you're down for it there is a program called visual pinball and we can we can blueprint our own pinball machine and create the like ramps and all that stuff for it and it's got all the features added to it and we could basically design our own pinball machine to play it <laughs> Okay, but we I I think we also need to write uh, our own original music to that then. Of course, yeah. I speaking of original music though with um with Pinball, there's a guy, I believe that was at Replay Effects in uh Pittsburgh. Um he created a Metroid Pinball machine and all of the all of the music for it is pro uh is provided by Metroid Metal Stemage's uh project. Oh no way, dude. Yeah, and it's and it's super dope. I know there's a video lingering around somewhere on YouTube where he explains like gameplay mechanics and all that stuff and like the music is I mean, it's Stemage. You can't go wrong with that. It's <laughs> he's such a fantastic guy. <laughs> he's a, Stemage is yeah, Brian Stemage rocks. Like th there's yeah. not much you could say about that. Grant Grant's really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, speaking of awesome people, you've um you've managed to rope a, another awesome person to work with you on your last track on this album. I did. I did. Um this this came about from um the last last physical gig that I did um which was VGM Con 2020 and then I think that weekend uh was when COVID hit. So like that was it. That was the last live show for a while for me. Um, and uh, Master Sword was playing that, and it was it it was really cool to get Lily to 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 agree to do this duet because it's it's a fantastic game. Uh, King's Quest Six is I don't know if you if any of you've ever played King's Quest Six. That is the, the soundtrack is amazing for that song alone. Um, and um, I don't even know. I I can't thank Lily enough. I don't know if she's watching this right now, but I I seriously can't thank her enough for doing this because um, I just it, it's it's a bucket list thing for me, and I'm I'm glad I got to do it. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. You know, and she did a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah, she knocked it out of the park, man, for sure. And and who could have expected anything less? I should say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what what uh, what table are we going to play to this one? <clears throat> we got to go back to Medieval Madness. <laughs> Just keep coming back to it. All right. We're on the tower. We're saving damsels, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see if we end up actually saving any damsels. But best of luck to us on that. And, uh, and for the rest of you, um, enjoy this last track. This is, uh, yeah, this is King's Quest. Uh, the track name is Girl in the Tower. You seem so far away And I just need to hear your voice I just need to hear you say If you would have me go
That four mil, though. Damn. Oh, dude, that four mil. How about that song? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> uh, Lil Lily, so I didn't know Dojo Bab was Lily, but thank you so much for doing this song because, like, when I – I was telling Josh this when we were playing pinball, but when I finished this song, I had, like, a Billy Joe Armstrong moment when he finished recording American Idiot. Like, I, like, started getting teary-eyed because I'm like, I can't believe, like, this is going to – this is a thing. I can't believe this happened. So, like, thank oh. you so much for doing this. I really, like, it means so much to me. Thank you. <laughs> well, when you put two pipes like that together, you create waterworks. That's a, that's a fitting metaphor, I think. That's that's and, and another thing I said uh, when I think, uh, yeah, it takes you, the 90s R&B plays. This is such a Disney Renaissance <laughs> post credit song. This is this is Michael <laughs> Bolton go the distance to me. Oh, man. So. <laughs> Like, uh, oh, man, why, why can't I think of that? Black Cauldron. 
Like, like that would be at the end of Black Cauldron, yes. right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Oh man, uh, maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit that's earlier a deep, in, that's in terms a deep of cut. era, but that's a deep cut, man. No, yeah, that's but... like that's like the dark ages of Disney too. That's like I don't even think that movie did well. <laughs> oh man, well it was still Don Bluth, right? Yeah, I think that was one of the last one of the last things he one did. One of the I last think, Disney, Disney ones that he did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he did Dragon's Lair and whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and whatever. Still a thing Disney. called Dragon's Lair. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, and, and like just as um as Katamari Damacy was like an awesome intro, I can't think of a better outro for for Rage Quit Volume Two. Man, you guys Such really a just like ending. ah like like that. The, those kind of bookends are, are what, for me anyways, when I'm listening to a, a, a proper album, it makes me want to go back and start all over from the beginning, right? Thank you. I mean, that means a lot. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, like, I don't know, especially in the days when, like, you know, people can just, like, put their singles up on Spotify and, like, you don't have to necessarily, like, think of the concept of an album. You know, you can just put out singles and, and rake in bucks, but, like, but I, I think there's there's, like, an art to putting together an album that not everybody understands and, um, and can do like, you know, like I think I, I I'm, a, I'm, I don't think it's there yet, but I'm, I'm cautious that, uh, that it might be a dying art, you know? I'm, I mean, I've, I'm a playlist maker at heart. So I, I always try and, and also, I mean, from a performer's perspective, obviously, and you, you would obviously know this as well because you, you perform, um, having it, it's always nice to have a good structure of, like uh like dynamics in a set list almost that way you don't have like too many bangers in the beginning you want something to kind of break up the dynamic in between so like yeah. I, even with track listings for albums i'm like i always thinking about that stuff yeah because yeah, it's just like even as a listener it's like how like would i get tired if i listen to like the same kind of vibe at at once and then like find something to break that up so <laughs> definitely yeah and and lily just such an incredible collab on that too if you do another Rage Quit album, I'd really like to hear a song about the scorpions and Animal Crossing. Oh, so that actually <laughs> brings up another another thing I think I was about to bring up uh, that we were talking about announcing, if oh, that's yeah. possible. Yeah, yeah, bring it up if you want. So, uh, in 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 that vein, um, uh, one of the so my drummer Jason Z, he's been uh, the original or he's the original drummer of the Arcadian Project. Um, We've been talking, we've been working together lately during the Dwelling of Duel stuff, and uh, I, I it's safe to say, because we've been talking about this a bunch, we are currently working on originals for the next album. I've been working on them for a bit, but uh, we're collabing on them as of, like, right now. Right so, now, this uh, very second. You're just, of, right this is now. all pre-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> right when we're playing pinball. So we do have, so, uh, we do have an Animal Crossing song in the works, um, and it's about Tom Nook. And I'm really excited about it. Um, but we're gonna try and release this in a singles format. I'd really like my whole thing is I've been really lackluster in doing videos. I'm not like the best. Oh, it is done. No, you didn't miss it, dude. No, you didn't miss it. You just you just rewind it and you're good. Just yeah. a little bit. We'll probably play some more pinball. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'd like to. I mean, yeah, I'd like to as well. I don't care. I got nothing else to do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do. Um, I'm, I'm a very busy person, but uh, I do. <laughs> but I, I want to play a couple more rounds with you for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. But um, no, I'm really excited. I can. I won't say. I can, I'll probably give some titles away, but I'm not going to play anything. We're not going to tease any music or anything. You're going to wait until it comes out because I like spoiling surprises too. I'm not great with with secrets. Um, so one of the titles is King Koopa Boogie. That's one I've been working on for a bit because I love Bowser and uh. That one's that one's a really good one. We're doing a Metroid song called Galaxy Girl, and it's very White Snake. So, if uh, if you know what I mean, <laughs> um, we got a Mega Man song that <laughs> we have a Mega Man song that we did as an acoustic cover or as an acoustic version for the Playing with Power Deluxe or Tour Edition album, and it's called Mega Man's Mega Rant. Um, and then we have featuring Mega um, Ram. <laughs> Mega, oh, maybe oh. have a rap. Oh. <laughs> You just, you know what? You're just, you're blowing my mind with these collab <laughs> ideas, man. <laughs> so we've got that, and then um, we're gonna we're gonna do a full live version of another song that's on the tour edition called Pokemon No. Uh, super, you know, super relevant with you know Pokemon Go. Um, yeah. And then I, I think that's all I'm gonna say for right now. Nice. 
Well, I, yep. I don't. I, as a stationary nerd, I don't play Pokemon Go. I play Pokemon Home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bad joke. <laughs> there's not. There's nothing. There's no gameplay in Pokemon Home. Anyway, there's no gameplay in Pokemon. Um, Home. Yeah, everyone, that's the album. Make sure you go on over to the uh, to the Arcadians Band Camp and get that in case you don't have it already. I almost put Rage Gut, Rage Gut Rage, Volume Two, <laughs> Rage Gut Volume Two. Rage Gut. Oh man. Uh, well, maybe, maybe. Oh, I think there was um, a request to hear some of those Tina Fey quotes. Um, and which one was that? Was that Monster Madness? No, it's this one. It's this one right here. It's this one so, right here. Okay, so let's... so it's so it's super tough. The only way you can get them is through the damsel ramp uh, on its own, and it's I, it's either Tina Fey or it's not. There's the uh, oh, that's me. Legal there we go. Okay. Sorry about that. that no worries. Uh, <laughs> so um, there are two princesses that Tina Fey voices. Uh, it's the German princess and I believe the Valley Girl princess. Um, the other one is the super famous female voice actor that did all the Williams pinball machines. Uh, I, I can't even... like She did so many of them, I, and I for, I'm forgetting her name right now. But we have but, to get um, the princess in the tower, the girl in the tower, if you will. If we're gonna yes. hear Tina Fey, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, well, yeah, we'll we'll give it a couple shots. I think uh, before we say goodnight. So, um, otherwise, everybody, thank you for coming out to the um, to the listening party. I've been having a lot of fun, John. Honestly, like I, I like that you made a special request to keep this really casual and and light. Um, I mean, that's like, all, I'm always for. I'm always down for just a good hang, just a good solid hang. That's all yeah, I'm just a all good, about. Solid hang. And it's super cool that um, before. This is so February 5th for me is the fifth. Well, this is the fifth anniversary of me wanting to do this project, mm -hmm. which is super cool. February 5th. Awesome. February 5th. Fifth year. Yep. Fifth year. Hooray. 02, 05, <laughs> 05, 21. Yep. <laughs> do the math on that. Uh, 02, 05, 05, 21. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the year 521. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, cool. hey, we're getting medieval, right? Oh, dang. That all is right. true. Oh, snap. The puns are rolling. Okay. Um, all, right. all right. So it's that it's that right ramp where the dragon is. Okay. Well, we got to get into that. Uh, oh, it's your game. You're up. Oh, and it's my game? The oh. sound on and, and you're actually going to hear us talk while we're playing uh, pinball all right. here. All right, let's see if I can get this. Okay, hold on. Damn it! Nice. Yeah, I got I'll, the extra ball though. You guys get to hear all of the dammits and and the and the fucks and the shits. All right, let's see if I can post exchange this. Ooh. Oh, I mean, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah, you wanted all those points. Very nice. All right, let's see if I can control this ball real quick. Yeah, now they get to hear the rage. <laughs> John's the ready actual to, rage quit. To, to reach through my screen and, uh, and break my computer. I don't know if that was Tina Fey. Well, okay, so that may or may not have been Tina Fey. Object, uh, objective complete. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Can one of my mods allow allow mice W to say shit? All right, I'm kind of off mod duty because I need to I need to keep my window focused on this. <laughs> See what we got going on here. Oh, I'm just gonna yeah, I've got I've got ball safe. I'm good. You got ball now safe. I don't. All right, let's see. There we, we go. Going. Okay, there we go. Nobody else gets to swear because it, it makes me have to mod. <laughs> you got so many little fireballs there, dude. I like noticing the different, the differences in uh, in play style that you and I have. Oh yeah, you're very conservative. Well, there's, I mean, playing. The cool thing about some of these tables is that there's certain modes that you just don't really want to play because you're just risking losing a ball at that point. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there's a few in here too where it's like it's a it's just a waste of time and a waste of a potential ball that you have. <laughs> All right, no, that's not what I wanted. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Nope. That's so really close. hard, dude. Yeah. It it's it like... really is.
Oh, don't even do that. Don't even go there. Fuck! That was Tina Fey for sure. What? You want me to fry? That's Tina Fey. There we go. Yeah, Tina Fey's on the stream, everybody. Woo! <laughs> We've got celebrity guests. Lily Taylor and Tina Fey. Oh, wait a minute. You got to shoot again on that? No. I, have an, I have an extra ball. <laughs> Dang, dude. Yep. Case end point. Many voice actors do multiple characters, like in Venture Bros. Oh, there's a series that I wish. You know, actually, to be honest, I didn't like the uh, the later seasons of that. You know, after, like, they got canceled a few times. Uh, I don't know. I was not a fan of Sergeant Hatred, but uh, but I did really love that show. Tina Fey is the dragon growl. You are correct, sir. Or ma'am. <laughs> oh, I'm up. Here we go. Oh, Joust multiball madness. There you go. Nice. That was quick. Now you just I have to complete the to mode you. like one time. Right. What's the matter? I only get one multi ball. So this, so the multi ball madness. Um, every time you complete a mode, it adds a ball to your multi ball. Oh, okay. Oh Jesus, you're creeping on me. Yeah. Oh shoot. Hey Brian, are you a pinball wizard? No, but I like to think I am. <laughs> I'm oh, sure Josh man. does too. Yeah, well, I got a shirt for it. My my partner <laughs> bought me a shirt for it that said pinball wizard. <laughs> and I don't. I, I I'm not wearing it tonight because I didn't want to like wear the shirt that says that I'm a pinball wizard and then lose Oh, and then you. and then completely and then like, suck. Oh, now I have to take off my shirt, hand it through the screen and give it to you. <laughs> oh man, technology would be fucking rad if that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. No, well, no, 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 give me that. I wonder what will develop first, that technology or like reasonable Smell music vision. licensing for covers on Twitch. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Oh man. Hot seat results. There we go. Well, we got Tina Fey. Uh, we realize that, yes, you are indeed the true pinball wizard. I don't know. You beat me quite a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's, it's the last winner who wins the most, right? I guess, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We didn't we didn't set up a ladder or anything. <laughs> nah, there's... I have... I mean, I have a handicap, so I feel like that's fair. Yeah, man. Well, I do look forward to the next time that we get to play pinball online together and IRL together. That sounds like a lot of fun. I would be really up for that, dude. As soon as I'm able to, I'm gonna to come to Vancouver. We're gonna we're gonna throw down. Hell yeah, man! Looking forward to it. And oh, um, yeah. yeah, looking forward to the next time we see all of your lovely faces in the chat. Um, yeah, don't forget we got bonus stage X coming up next weekend. Before that, actually, we squeezed in um, Rob Kovacs, uh, also known as 88-Bit, is releasing his solo album. It isn't VGM, but he's like such a prominent VGM player that uh, that I decided, yeah, okay, I'll host. Rob's listening party. You know that's going to be fun. But his but his originals are fantastic too. That's that's what's so cool about it. Yeah, yeah, they're really heartfelt and uh, and you know whether you're a fan of VGM or just a fan of Rob, you should definitely be there. Um, oh, and cringe multiplayer Tuesday. Yes, that's right. So uh, this coming Tuesday, my partner and I, you know, I usually have my like my Tuesday night stream. I've been doing Celeste lately, but we've right. been like once a month. We've been. Um, putting on like last month we did uh like shrek super party and she joined me for that i remember seeing that yes we did uh we did uh mary <laughs> kate and ashley sweet 16 license to drive before that and um and i don't know i think we were we were teasing like um like barbie's horse adventure or something like that for next week i don't know we're, we're gonna God. find something cringy and uh and just like poke as many funds and holes into it as we can 
Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of fun, and it's really yeah. nice to have her on the stream too. She's a lot of fun to stream with. Um, oh yeah. But yeah, that's all that's going up on uh, going on on my end. What about you, dude? What's next for for the Arcadian? Other than we're working on originals, um, there is a. I'm planning a follow up EP for uh, the Gauntlet EP, and it's going to be. Um, God, I don't know why it's, I'm drawing a blank. It's probably because it's super late in the evening for me. But um, <laughs> it's not not even. It's only like 11, and I go to bed at 3 a.m. sometimes. Um, the Dungeons and Dragons Warriors of the Eternal Sun for Sega Genesis. I'm doing an EP on that. Nice. Yep. Dude, sick. Okay. Well, that'll, yeah. that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. And hopefully, Viking Guitar will master it again. Oh, dude. Yeah. Get him. To, I mean, he's the nicest guy. He'll do, he'll do all the work that he can, but, uh, but you know, yeah. <laughs> he's, oh man, he's a busy guy for sure. He really is, but he's a legend. I mean, he's, he's Viking guitar. He's been doing this for a long time. Same as, I mean, obviously with, with Grant as well. I mean, they're, yeah. they're like, you know, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the granddaddies. We are, we're the, they babies. are the granddaddies. Yeah. We are, we are, but <laughs> humble servants. <laughs> Awesome, dude. Well, yeah, John, it's it's been really fun hanging out with you online. Um, we'll do Anytime, it again man. soon. And, uh, and yeah, well, good night, everybody. Have a good night.